Grace to you in peace in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to this service of worship at Bethany United Methodist Church, a congregation in Durham, North Carolina. We welcome everybody this day as we are invited, as we are called. We are God's children and we are invited to be in God's kingdom. So let us worship that God who extends invitation as we light the lights in our homes and in our places of worship. Let us worship God together. comes my salvation. For, For God, God alone, alone my soul waits in silence. silence. God alone is my rock and my salvation. God, God is, is my, my fortress. fortress. I, I shall never be shaken. shaken. present form of this world is passing away. Therefore, help us to keep our focus on you, Lord, for true power and steadfast love belong to you. Amen. Amen. 
Continuing with our prayer for illumination, speak to us your word, O God, that we may hear Jesus' call to be his disciples. Amen. Amen. Our first scripture reading is um, Jonah, and we're going to read the whole third chapter. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very important city. A visit required three days. On the first day, Jonah started into the city. He proclaimed, 40 more days and Nineveh will be overturned. The Ninevites believed God. They declared a fast and all of them from the greatest to the least put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth and sat down in the dust. Then he issued a proclamation in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, do not let any man or beast, herd or flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows, God may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he had compassion and did not bring upon them the destruction he had threatened. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our Psalter this morning is um, from Psalm 62. It's on page 787 in the United Methodist Hymnal. Um, it should be on your screen as well, and we will sing the response. in silence for, for my, my hope is from god, god who alone is my rock and my salvation my fortress i shall not be shaken on god rests my deliverance and my honor my mighty rock my refuge is god trust in god at all times O people pour out your heart before god who is a refuge for us I sing your praise for steadfast love, fulfill your purpose for me. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up. They are together lighter than a breath. Put, Put no, no confidence, confidence in extortion. extortion. Set, Set no, no vain, vain hopes on robbery. robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this, power belongs to God. And to you, O Lord, belongs steadfast love, for you repay all according to their work. I sing your praise for steadfast love. to mention that the special music uh, this morning is given by Liz uh, Peterson. Um, she is a friend of uh, Becky.
Amen. We have been able to have wonderful music uh, in this season of COVID-19 because of the virtual nature of worship. Um, Becky, thank you for extending the invitation. And um, we give thanks for this beautiful sharing. Hear now from the Gospel of Mark. The first chapter beginning with the 14th verse. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea. For they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them. And they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Several years ago, Sharon Stone and I participated in a leadership academy sponsored by the North Carolina Leadership Academy. One day we participated in a group building activity, a team building exercise, a trust walk of sorts, one person blindfolded, the other person unfold, unblindfold, not blindfolded and having their vision. Sharon was pretty clear. She did not want to be blindfolded. I had to do a gut check and, and test my sense of trust, and I agreed to be blindfolded. We didn't just leave the room we were in. We were meeting at Edenton Street United Methodist Church in Raleigh, and that church takes up easily a downtown city block. And we were walked out of our room to a different wing of the campus up a flight of stairs to some room. We got there. And then once we got there, we were given the instruction that we were in a toxic waste area. There had been a toxic spill or some toxic material found. It, found. And the people who were blindfolded were to remove the toxic element with the direction and instruction of the sighted person. There were two requirements for those who were blindfolded. You had to trust the person who had vision and the blindfolded person had to be willing to take the direction and instruction from the person who was sighted. It was interesting. What was interesting about it was that not only was the blindfolded person having to listen to the sighted partner, there were other blindfolded people with whom I had to cooperate and there were other sighted people who Sharon had to cooperate with. It was really interesting. It was clear Sharon was the person who would do the better job between the two of us of giving the direction and her ability to see and strategize was far better than mine. So, 
we ended up accomplishing the task. I think, I think we did, Sharon. I'll check with you later. But it was interesting. It was an interesting study in trust. Also, it was an interesting study in being willing to acknowledge that different people have different gifts, but all are called. Trusting the one who gives the direction and following the directions. Jonah, Simon, James, John, and Andrew. This might be a good time to sing the Sesame Street song. One of these things is not like the other. One of these things just doesn't belong. Can you tell which one of these things is not like the other? Andrew, Simon, James, and John have a very different response to being given a set of directions or an invitation, if you will, than Jonah did. But in both the Old Testament and the gospel lessons for today, God invites people to accomplish big things. Jonah is given a clear set of instructions with great detail. Get up. Get up. I got you out of the well's belly. Now come on. And I'm giving you a second set of instructions. Get up, go to Nineveh, and tell them what I have told you to tell them. It's pretty specific. Well, the first set of instructions got wet. He ended up in a well's belly because he did not want to do what God had invited him. Actually, that's too gentle a word what God had told him to do. God gave specific instruction and direction. Jonah attempted to thwart God's will. He lived to tell about it. That's impressive. God did not give up on Jonah. Simon, Andrew, James, and John their experience is different. The scenario is different, but there are similarities. There's, but there is a boat involved. There was in Jonah. There's water involved. There was in Jonah. Their fish insinuated in the gospel. There was a big fish in Jonah. But there's some significant differences as well. Jesus is preaching in the region where these guys have their fishing business. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. A simple sermon. The instruction that's given, it might not be as clear. Repent, believe the good news. What's the good news? All we see around us is an empire that has got us under its thumb. We're persecuted for our religious beliefs. Good news. But something about it was compelling. Jesus sees these guys doing their work, fishing and mending nets. And he says, come with me. Come, and I will have you sweeping up and catching people. And something about that message, that curious invitation, that invitation that had very few details, it was compelling. They immediately dropped their nets, jumped out of the boat, left dad with the hired hands, and they followed this itinerant, itinerant rabbi preacher. 
It has been said that the devil is in the details. Wouldn't you want details? Wouldn't you want assurances? Wouldn't you want to know what it was going to cost you? The only directions or the only direction of inst or instruction that Andrew, Simon, James, and John were given was to repent. Repent and believe the good news. In case you missed it, the good news was that the kingdom of God had come near. Not that the kingdom of God was there, but it was mighty close. And this was something that these guys had been waiting on for generations. And the fact that they had been waiting for this for so long, the follow me was an interesting invitation. No guarantees, just a direction, repent. Change the direction you are going in and go in a new direction. And that new direction was to follow Jesus. And they did it. Without a lot to go on. With no guarantees. With no idea of the cost. They did it. This is a miraculous story. I don't know about you. Actually, I do. I know a good bit about a lot of you. And y'all know a lot about me. That's a lovely part of Christian community. I'm far more like Jonah. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh -uh. Nineveh, I've heard about those people. I have heard of their marauding, their bloodlust. Oh, no, 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 no. You've got it wrong, Lord. I'll give you a little time to think about it. Jonah and the guys in the Galilee are receiving the same direction from the same authority. As always, these stories say much more about God than they do about humanity. What we can trust in both of these stories is that God seeks. God desires to seek and find us. God desires to seek and find those that we find reprehensible and deplorable. In Jonah's, in the book of Jonah, God seeks a bloodthirsty empire. He sends Jonah to the heart of the Assyrian empire. Nineveh in a few, a few years from when Jonah, the story of Jonah occurs, will become the capital of the Assyrian empire. They are a savage people who will end up savaging and destroying the kingdom of Israel. Jonah's ways are not God's ways. And ultimately, Jonah is obedient. And much to Jonah's chagrin, when he gets to Nineveh and he marches through town, through the city and back again, proclaiming that in 40 days, God will destroy it all if you do not repent. Darned if the people didn't repent. And it makes Jonah furious. He goes and finds a little scrub tree to sit under. Actually, he goes to sit out in the hot sun to pout. And God, being a God of forbearance, grows a little tree to give him shade. Jonah curses him for it. And then a worm comes and eats the tree. So there's a little cautionary there.
The same God who loves Jonah loves the people of Nineveh. And for some of us, that is really hard to swallow. And we receive the same direction as Jonah. Get up, go, take my message. Now, I doubt that any of us are going to be sent far way off to a bloodthirsty place to proclaim God's call of repentance. Now, I'm not saying that won't happen, but, but the odds aren't great. Ah, but God might call you and say, get up, take my message and go speak to so-and-so. And you go, oh, no, I'm not, mm -mm, that's too hot for me to touch. Not going there. I've heard about so-and-so. I know so-and-so. I've experienced so-and-so. Mm -mm, no way, Lord. And God will have God's way. And so, we screw our courage up and go to talk to the person who God has sent us to, the person for whom we feel great disdain and the person who God loves as much as God loves me. God sends us to offer hope and love and redemption and reconciliation. What this story teaches us is that God will not give up on calling you and calling me. And God will not give up on the one who you see is irredeemable. And also, we have received the same invitation as Andrew, Simon, James, and John. Repent, turn around. Check out where you are. The kingdom of God has come near. Come, follow me. We are the people in the team building exercise who are blindfolded. It is God. It is God made known in Christ that has the vision. We are blinded in this season by COVID-19. We are blinded by the many isms of our day. We are blinded by rumor, innuendo. We are blind. To repent is to confess that we have little to no vision. We have gotten turned around trying to walk around with our blindfolds on. To trust the one who invites us to come and follow. This is the only way our vision is restored. But for today, we must trust the one who can see, who does see, who offers us guidance. We must see and listen. We must listen while we cannot see. We must listen to the direction. We must listen closely to the direction and the instruction and then follow the direction and instruction. This requires such trust in a time when trust has been eroded and seems very scarce. It is good news that Jesus does not call us to come and follow based on our having the answers. No, 
the invitation this day. It's quite simple. Just come. Amen. invite you to join with me as we affirm those things that we do believe using the Apostles Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. invitation. Trusting in the promise of grace, let us pour out our hearts before God. Let us confess our sins. Forgiving God, we repent of all the ways we turn from you. You call, but we do not listen. You show us your path, but we prefer our own way. Forgive us, heal us, and lead us back to you, that we might show mercy to others. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven by God and given new life. Amen. I would invite you to unmute yourself as we share with one another our joys and concerns. 
um, a joy was shared as we entered into worship that Ann Schunkweiler had a birthday this week. Uh, and Ann, I celebrate that you're back on the internet today and able to be with us. Happy birthday. Others. Julia, this is Danny. I uh, wish to keep our next door neighbor, Sally Sloan, on the list. She went into a coma after her surgery. And as far as I know, as of Friday, she's still there. Okay, this is Danny and Robbie's neighbor who took a bad fall. And thank you for the update. And we, we pray for her and the family. Thank you, Danny. Others. Jeanette Vaughn had a birthday. <gasps> Happy birthday, Jeanette Vaughn. I saw, I heard that in Sunday school. Sorry about that. So did Barbara. Others. Me, hey, Jennifer. I have a couple of thanks. Yes, Jennifer, uh, good to hear you. My first one is that um, I did have that heart test a cut what a Monday or two Mondays ago, and my heart is normal, no disease, no damage from COVID. Great. Um, and a huge thank you out to you and my Bethany family. Absolutely, gratitude is the key to everything. Thank you, Jennifer. And good news on the heart stuff. This COVID is the gift that keeps on giving, isn't it? Others. Oh, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, I can attest to that. Yeah, yeah. Thank Others? you. I wanted, to, yes. I wanted to thank everybody. I'm still moving in the right direction. I gained four pounds this week. <laughs> so I must be eating right. Good, 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 good. That is good news, Dan. And you you sound more like yourself today. That is good to hear. And um, yeah, good nutrition. I will say this. It's important. Dan, Dan was treated uh, with the best protocols for COVID, but one of the meds he was treated with causes your muscles to get weak. So nutrition builds that back up as well. So that's good news, Dan. Others? Yes, uh, Rus Russell Jones is going in for catheterization on Tuesday, if we keep him in our prayers, and he is he is without uh, without a phone right now, so he's he's struggling with uh, with the uh, his communication issues. Yeah, yeah, and and Russell loves to be in touch. Russell has had some heart damage as a result of COVID, and. Yes. They will be, um, I believe, placing a stent, um, and he is able to connect with you. If you use Facebook Messenger, you can mm -hmm. um, um, use that sort of like text. But um, yeah, he is he is in a phone desert right now. Others, Julia. Yes. Prayers for Earl's oldest sister in Norfolk, who has been isolated in a rest home for over a year. Yeah. Uh, thank goodness she was sent to the hospital for a few days this week uh -huh. and got to see her family that she had not seen for most of a year. But she sent back to the nursing home under hospice. So prayers for the whole family. Remind me of her name. Lena Matheson. Lena. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, COVID-19 has made everything so hard and the isolation is one of the cruelest pieces of it. So um, prayers for Lena, her family and everybody who's taking care of her, that this will be a peaceful time. Thank you. Others. Pam and I apologize for uh, being tardy, but we were on a FaceTime call with our granddaughter in Maine and she was lively and performing. We couldn't say bye. You are in the right place, my brother. Oh, we would be, um, and now you're just showing off, Clint. That's good news. Um, that is good news. I do have one more that I just thought of, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, we lost a dear family friend to um, cancer last week. Um, his name was Pat Mitros. Um, we were friends. He was my family friend's father. So he was more my dad's and mom's friend. Mm -hmm. um, very kind, gentle man. Just 
a true loss. His name was Pat Mitros. Pat Mitros, we do, we do. And we lift up the complexity of, you know, at the end of the day, death is not very complicated. It's painful, but it's not very complicated. Um, but the rituals around all of this have been made so much more complex. So we indeed um, pray with that family as well with others. Let us go to God together. God of new visions, we pray for people highly placed in power that they may focus their eyes on you. And we pray for the lowly victims of power that they may also focus their eyes on you. We pray for those who bless with their lips but curse with their lives, including ourselves. We pray for those who are ill and for those facing the end of life. Give them the gift of prayer that they may pour out their hearts to you. We pray for the church and its leaders that we may hear and respond to your call to be fishers of people. Rock of our salvation, through Christ and your Holy Spirit, bring us into the new world that you are shaping, even as this world is passing away. Amen. God is our rock and our fortress. Let us celebrate our salvation by fearlessly giving a portion of what has already been given to us. Let us bring our offerings unto God. God, you have saved us for a purpose. 
We dedicate the gifts we bring this day as we dedicate our lives to you that, you, that you will make us fishers of people. We are bold this day to pray to you as Jesus has taught us saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. that God is with us and calls us for a purpose. May the God of second chances renew your sense of call and inspire you to go out and share the good news, the good news of forgiveness and hope. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you. 